Ladies and gentlemen, join me as we welcome back our beloved pastor. Despite being wrongfully accused and in prison, his faith remains unshaken. Join me as we raise a toast. Cheers to God for his resilience and restoration of justice. Pastor Ai, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Your faith and strength inspire us all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Once again, we are going to say thank you so much for our most high God. I am going to thank my spiritual parents, Bishop and Pastor Mary of Fusu up here and Reverend Obri Ajekum and Reverend Gifty Obri Ajekum. My management, Miss Anita of Star Effect. Thank you and God bless you. This is Cheers to God. Invite everybody. Tell your family that Cheers to God is on. What God is about to turn your life around. What's the I? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Reverend Isaac I and uh, head pastor of uh, IE Ministry and uh, uh, IE Prison Ministry. We just moved to uh, Atlanta uh, a year and a half ago. Okay. And um, we we'll have a live programs that we do on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, uh, on uh, IE Ministries. This is when you wanted to find the truth. No, through trial. Okay. We prove everything through trial. And they still gave you life? Yeah. And not only that, they use uh, a false green card. They didn't have birth certificate to prove her age. They didn't have mother to prove her age. So all the document they are using, they lied to immigration to get it, to Who prosecute lied? me. Okay. They came here as refugees. Who came here as refugees? This woman and the daughter okay. that are accusing me came okay. here from Liberia as refugees with the alleged father or so-called father. And when they came to the United States as refugees, they claimed that they were the biological parent of this girl and they gave them a documentation. Um, because when you come here, you don't have papers and you say that I'm the father, I'm the mother, they'll give you a documentation based on that. And so within the case that my lawyer was investigating, that's where we find out that she's not the biological mother. And so the prosecutor called the woman before we went to trial and the, and the father and asked them, are you the biological parent of this girl? And everything that they document, they have to give us a copy. And so now they change their mind after one year that they are not a biological parent of this girl. And what did the court do? They didn't do nothing. They just still sentenced you? They still sentenced me. And they used that, they gave us a copy of that statement. And so my lawyer filed a motion to dismiss the case. He said, you people don't have case here. If these people that are making statement, changing their statement, and you don't have birth certificate to prove the age of this person, the so-called alleged mother and father are now saying they are not parent, then what is, what is uh, the evidence that you people are using to come into conclusion that this is 16 years woman? And so, Pastor, this is when you were in prison? No, this is when I was going through trial okay so before trial so we've gone through the trial part you have been jailed you're now in prison and for some reason all this was proved but it didn't work on your behalf it didn't they had to still put you in mm -hmm. for 40 days to life so we're out of that part mm -hmm. now you're in jail right in prison in, now you're in prison mm -hmm. what was the wake-up call that made you say i'm not gonna take this we already had evidence in the case that okay. proved my innocent. And okay. the prosecutor knew it. Okay. And uh, even immigration people came in and told the prosecutors that you can't just put this man in prison. You have to investigate. We, because we went to immigration and they confirmed that the document that immigration is using is fraud. The court didn't care. They said appeal should take and care of it. And this is a new lawyer? Uh, yeah, the new lawyer. Okay. And so we, ha we already had evidence in the case that proved my innocent. But the court, they didn't care. The jury just listened to the case and all they were hearing is a pastor, you know, has had sex with underage. And 
the prosecutor repeated it. And that's what got into them. And that's how I was convicted. How did this lawyer, what did he do different? What was, what was different now that now for some reason, they started listening to you? Okay. Now, when I was in prison, a friend came to me and I call him a friend because uh, we became friends in prison. And he said, Reverend Isaac, I've gone through your case. It's a Jew, and he knew the law. A friend came to you. He went with, to your case. It's of somebody that you were in prison with. Yeah. Okay. And uh, he said, I've gone through your case, and you're not supposed to be here. These people lie, and the prosecutors cover things to put you here. And um, if you can, open your case again, and you'll be out of this. At that time, I've already appealed it. I lost I've appealed on uh, Supreme Court. I lost. No, no. Yeah. Appeal on appeal court. I didn't go to the Supreme, but appeal court. I lost. And I asked for reconsideration and the judge denied. But what happened was when I was in prison, um, I called my wife to raise money. And um, we hired new investigators and uh, we opened the case again and I got a new, lo uh, new lawyer. And then um, from there, we, we filed for um, Rule 33. Uh, there's a motion called Rule 33, which you open in your case to show the evidence again to the court that the court was wrong. So we gather all the evidence that we had, uh, went to court again. The prosecutors did their investigation and everything, and confirm our evidence and everything, and come to find out um, uh, we had the actual birth certificate of this person. Uh, we sent people to go to their country where she was born. And not only that, um, they also confirm that they lie, understand, and uh, Based on all the things that they change and all the lies they lie, we put them together. But we actually got the actual birth certificate from where this person was born and come to find out um, she was, at that time, she was, I think, 20 years old. And several the time she they said claimed that she was raised yeah, she was 20 years 20 old. years old. And Sierra Leone government gave us a copy of that document. And with all the evidence we had. So the, the court uh, agreed to look into my case. And then from there, my lawyer was able to prove my innocence. And the prosecutor were, were not able to do anything. And the judge reversed the case. As a pastor in prison, this is, how was life in prison? Surely prison is not a place where anybody should go. That's the first thing I'll say. But you meet all kinds of people there. You meet people that are murderers, people that are thieves, rapers. I mean, all kinds of people. I, will, I won't get time to go into it, but next time I might talk more about it. But prison is not a place where anybody should go. Uh, The Lord was with me. The Lord favored me. Um, I became a chaplain assistant. And um, they gave me a um, position to you know, do service with the inmate. And so we do service every day, morning, afternoon, evening. And gang people came to know God. So many people came to know God. You became a chaplain in prison? Yeah. Were you no matter God? No, I was not. God didn't do anything. God didn't do anything. It's men that did that. See, most of the time when things happen to us, we begin to shift the blame to God. No, God didn't do anything. Men are wicked. And not only that, people would do anything for money. These people were paid. Who paid them? One of, some of our pastors paid them to do what they did. And so when you are dealing with people that are willing to take anything, to do any evil to anybody, people don't care. They will do whatever they want to do. And one thing about Colorado, Colorado is a prison state. 
That's one thing a lot of people don't know. Colorado have more prisons and more people in prison than anywhere. And they do it um, to keep the system going in Colorado. And so all you have to do is to say something on somebody. And especially if the person is in position of trust or something like that, that's it. You think you said something to somebody? You think you offended someone? No. You still and don't e- know why. Even, even if I did, I don't deserve what I went through. But do you, as you sit down today and you look back, do you think or know that I said something, did something to somebody that no. he intentionally did this to me? No. 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 Actually, um, I can, I, I won't say this to brag, but we've helped a lot of people. And not only that, uh, so many men of God, I've heard so many men of God, I've heard so many church members. And I can, when I look back, I see supporting people. People how, live. How was your family surviving when you were in prison? My, my wife lost a lot of weight and she became like one. <laughs> one. It was so bad. But she came and testified for me. And um, it really broke my heart when how I saw How did she her. take care of the family? Uh, I believe the Lord gave her strength that she didn't have. I didn't even know she, 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 she can do that, but the Lord gave her strength that she didn't have to take care of the children. She was able to do that. Mr. I, as believers, we all believe and know that if anything should happen to us or if something is about mm-hmm. to happen, God has a way of revealing it to us. Was there ever a time that you got a dream or God anything? God doesn't reveal everything. That's what a lot of people say, but God doesn't reveal everything. There are things God doesn't reveal. The book of Deuteronomy talk about it. There are things that God keeps for himself. What happened to Job, God didn't tell Job, and yet Job was a righteous man. There are so many people that have gone through so many evil things, bad things. David went through a lot of them, and it was not revealed to him, but he went through it. His son Absalom, you know, came against him, but God didn't tell him that your son is going to come against you. But at the end of the day, the, the law prevailed. You had pastors come into your church. Yeah. You had prophets come into mm-hmm. your church. No prophecy. Nothing came that said no. that. Actually, the last prophecy uh, that came was, uh, 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 the last day we finished the program, the man of God from South Africa prophesied. And he said, God is going to enlarge your ministry and God is going to bless you beyond measure. The next day I was arrested. You know, but does that mean God didn't speak? He did. Does that mean what God said was not true? No. It means that, you know, anytime God is doing something, Satan also is doing something. But at the end of the day, we, our faith in Christ is what builds us up to stand against any storm that comes on our way. And so because prophet came into your ministry or came into your life, doesn't mean it's going to tell you what is happening to you. But the truth of the matter is, before this incident happened, God revealed it to me and revealed it to my wife. What did you say? At the Nana Morrison Foundation, we support children and widows, providing long-term solutions to help lift them out of poverty. We believe the Word of God cannot be shared on an empty stomach. So please, donate to support, and let's end starvation and hunger. We accept and encourage donations from anyone, But our best partners are you, the local churches and faith-based community. Your support, big or small, can make a huge impact on other people's lives. Please, donate. And so, because prophet came into your ministry, came into your life, that doesn't mean it's going to tell you what is happening to you. But the truth of the matter is, before this incident happened, God revealed it to me and revealed it to my wife. What did you see? Okay, I saw that I was in the midst of cannibals. 
And I came out of it. I went in the midst of cannibals. And I think I told my wife that. Uh, I went in the midst of cannibals and I said, God has sent me into the midst of cannibals. And I went and prayed to them and I came back. And she too had a dream. And um, she saw that I went to Kroger in, in Colorado, they call it King Supers, but Kroger. And I went and bought something with my son. My son was like, uh, I believe, five, six years old at that time. And when I was coming out of the store, I was having a lot of, uh, a lot of um, things that I bought. And I was pushing the cart to my car. And police came to me and said, you are arrested because you stole that thing. Yet I have a receipt that shows that I've paid for it. And so she told me that we prayed, but it still happened. We did, I think within a week or two, this incident happened. Pastor Ayi, there's somebody watching us right now. Mm -hmm. And they have yes, seen a dream, seen a vision. God has revealed something to them. They have prayed about it. And this thing still happened. They're still going through the trial, the difficult time. What would be your message to them based on what you went through? Yeah. See, there is one thing of God revealing something and also redeeming. The Bible says God revealed to redeem. And we know that. But we also, sometimes God allowed things to happen for his, for his glory, for him to do something in the midst of the situation. And if you are watching me wherever you are, Joseph didn't do anything. All he did was to be a brother to his siblings. And yet, they hated him without a cause. What he went through, for example, if I was in a shoe and I met Joseph in prison, and I have the power to bring Joseph out of prison, I would have done that quick. But I could have stopped what God wanted to do in his life because God was taking him to Pharaoh. But you see, if you are there at that time, you might think that because he's in prison, he need help. Sometimes God allowed things to happen to take us to Pharaoh. But the only way we can get to Pharaoh is to go through prison. In the eyes of men, people don't want what happened. But I came to understand it after all this happened, that God had a purpose in what happened. Today we have a prison ministry. And by God's grace, we've brought few men out of prison. And so if I didn't go through prison, I wouldn't have done this. You know, I wouldn't have even thought of having prison ministry. And so it doesn't matter what you are going through. You might be a pastor. You might be a church member. You might be a, you know, a co-worker. It doesn't matter what you are going through. We are quick to blame God because we are going through something. Sometimes you pray, you don't see nothing happen. Sometimes somebody prophesy and it still happen. It doesn't mean that God didn't hear. It means God has an agenda. Pastor I, you went to prison and you're out of prison. Amen. And you are positive. You are hopeful. Amen. There's somebody watching us now who has just come out of prison. Amen. Totally shattered. Mm. Do not know where to start from. Mm. Feel like they are... Um, Reject, they feel rejection, mm. mental health, everything is not adding up right now. Mm. What would be your message? How will they overcome um, the trials that would have, uh, that's going on in your mental? Amen. I had a mental, you know, attack. Seven times I wanted to take my life when I was in Seven times. And seven times, God, the Spirit of the Lord, you know, delivered me from it. And not only did he deliver me from it, they gave me a, uh, a ministry in prison to talk to those who want to commit suicide. Mm. I didn't talk to the warden. The warden came to me one day and said, Mr. Isaac, we know you're a pastor, so we want you to talk to those who want to commit suicide. See, I didn't tell them I wanted to commit suicide. And yet God well, spoke to the you. warden. And a lot of people were free from that. So I went through so many mental torture. 
But at the end of the day, the word of God in me and the word of God that I trusted, that I lean on, also brought me out of it. Because that was my hope. That was the only thing that I did in prison. Stay in the word and also preach the word whilst I was in prison. And most of the people come to our pray for them and I will prophesy in their life and they'll get out of prison and I'll be there. And it happened over and over and over. So it got to a time when people come to me, I don't want to prophesy anymore. Even if I see something, I keep quiet. And then the Spirit of the Lord began to rebuke me on that. What happened in prison that made me believe in God like never before. I've preached on every subject in the Bible. God has done miracles upon miracles in my ministry. The people I met in prison, after God touched them, they looked for my wife and sent their tithe to my wife. Hmm. Prisoners called their family members to help my family. Whilst Christians that I know didn't give me even one dime. I thank God that God did not abandon my family. He didn't abandon me. He used the prisoners and he also used people I don't know to support me and to help me to come out of prison. And so if you are watching me wherever you are, God is not a liar. If he said it, he would do it. Paul didn't speak only on what God did for him, but he also spoke on his afflictions. He talked about his imprisonment, his imprisonment. He talked about how he stood before Agrippa. He he talked about how they beat him. He talked about so many things about himself. And we read about Paul, yet if Paul is in our generation today, I believe Paul would never have any congregation because Paul went to prison more than anybody I've known. And yet he came out successful and God used him. And today we read so many things about Paul. But at the end of the day, I want to strengthen you wherever you are. Put yourself together. If you are trying to curse God or say all kinds of negative things about God, God is not a liar. God didn't do any evil to you. God didn't do that to me. If God allows something, it doesn't mean he did it. It means even though Satan meant it for evil, but whatever Satan is doing, God is going to prove himself that he is God. At the end of the day, his name will be glorified in our lives. Amen. Thank you so much. I wish we would end this, but our time is up. Thank you very much. Amen. In a few few words, please, can you usher somebody to Christ? Amen. If you don't know Christ, if you have not met Jesus, if you have not received him as your Lord and Savior, this is the right time. Receiving him as your savior is not necessarily him giving you money, but it's more to do with your soul being saved from the hands of the enemy into his kingdom. I want to introduce Jesus to you. He did it for me and he can do it for you. If you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, I want you to say these words after me. Say, Jesus. I realize I'm a sinner. I realize I'm a sinner. And I repent for my sins. I repent for my sins. From today. From today. Come and live in my heart. Come and live in my heart. And be my Lord. And be my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you said these simple words, I want you to connect to this platform and allow yourself to grow. Because by just receiving Jesus as your Lord and pressing the Savior, it's your spiritual connection to heaven. You are saved. God did that. Now you are saved. But you have to grow. 
your mind have to grow. Your mental have to grow. Your spiritual life have to grow. You have to become a Christian. The word Christian means to become like Christ. So if you don't grow, that is where you begin to, you become confused and, you know, abandon the faith. So growth is important. Connect to this platform, hear the word and grow and become what the Lord has called you to become. God bless you for connecting to this platform. Thank you so much, Pastor. I, God bless you for such ah, this powerful, powerful testimony. The word of God makes us understand that we overcame the devil by the word of the Lamb and our testimony. Amen. And I believe that a lot of lives are going to be transformed today. Um, people who understand why they go to trial in the Lord. And thank you for sharing your Amen. story with us. Thank you very Amen. much. How can we find you? Social media handle. Oh, I do life uh, programs, uh, kingdom uh, principles on IE Ministry, on all the social media platform. You type in IE Ministry, uh, you connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and we also have Zoom program that we do. So when you connect to our Facebook, right, and we have, a, I believe, our website, IE Ministry, at uh, ieministry.org or something, something like that. Connect so with Pastor IE. Connect with us, amen. Connect with Pastor IE. I believe that he is the man that can guide you, strengthen you in your trial. This is cheers to God. You know, again, we have to go and we will be back again with men that have been touched by God and have stories to share. I want you to have a blessed day. But before <laughs> we go, um, you can watch us on Instagram as cheers to God on Facebook as cheers to God on um, YouTube as cheers to God our website is cheers to God.com. We are on all the social media platforms as cheers to God. Connect with me personally. I'm Nana Morrison and school on Instagram, Facebook, Nana Morrison. I will be back again with life transforming stories and messages. God bless you and have an amazing day. Bye-bye.